Hi folks, uh, so this is Luke from the Exiles in Sheffield and today I was doing a little bit of uh, maintenance on some of my weapons just adding some linseed oil to the hafts so I thought I'd do a little video um, about these um, so what we got is basically a mace warhammer, another warhammer and a war club so they're all percussive weapons so they're all basically trying to do the same sort of job um, which is to be anti-armour weapons there's no real reason to use these in civilian life um, without armour on really um, cutting weapons are better um, for that sort of thing whereas as soon as you start adding armour whether it's padded armour um, or mail or plate then the cutting action actually becomes less effective so you're needing to actually deal damage through the armour into the squishy stuff underneath so you've got a few different ways of doing that with these weapons uh, first one is fairly standard mace flanged mace so it's the same all the way around it's got these flanges that project from it uh, that's probably 14th um, early 15th century uh, then we've got this bestial war hammer which is based on an example in a Venice Museum uh, and is thought to date from around 1380 then we've got this other war hammer um, that's a bit more generic sort of uh, late 14th to mid 15th century and then we've got this which is my interpretation of a war club uh, which is found in illustrations and there are no surviving examples but there's illustrations of this or several illustrations of this type of weapon in the Machievsky Bible which dates from around 1240-ish so the big difference between them are these three are all one-handed weapons uh, and are primarily used um, in conjunction with a shield so for example say you're a knight or a man at arms you go charging in on your horse you use your lance you stick your lance into somebody you lose that you then pull this out or this or this as a secondary weapon so then you start laying into people with that if you lose that then you can pull your sword out whereas the club um, the illustration seems to depict it as a footman's um, weapon. So it could be one-handed, could be two-handed. It's difficult to tell. We're usually just sort of holding it propped on the shoulders. Um, it's kind of difficult to tell from the illustrations what bits are metal and what bits are not. But they have this spiral design on them, which I thought would make more sense being metal rather than just being leather or painted or whatever because then it adds a little bit of protection to the haft uh, if we go back a little bit to these three so the big difference between the maces and the hammers is obviously you've got a striking face uh, with the hammers so if you look on the hammerheads they've got these points which help the hammerhead to actually bite into the armour yeah if you're hitting with a hammerhead obviously the spike bites in if you're hitting with the spike but the thing about that is you still need to keep your edge alignment pretty decent as you're striking whereas a mace there isn't really an edge alignment with it of course there's going to be planes where you're doing more damage but it doesn't really matter how you're holding it so if it slips about in your hands so you're sweaty or you know nervous or you're struggling to pick it up or whatever you can just start sort of hitting people with it and it doesn't really matter about edge alignment the hammers you kind of have to choose which way you're holding it whether you want to hit with a beak or with a hammerhead it's easy enough to switch around you know it's not complicated but it's something that you do have to bear in mind and choose how you're actually using it so in addition to that the difference between the two hammers is obviously this one's got a top spike so that's going to add an extra option so that's going to allow you to thrust into um, 
vulnerable parts so whether it's male whether it's having tails or necks or throats or faces or whatever whereas not having that spike means you're not really going to be thrusting with this type of hammer you can still strike with it um, if somebody's got an open face helmet that'll do some damage but you're not going to penetrate male with it you're not going to do much damage to armor um, so you're going to be striking with the two faces of it one more thing to note about these type of hammers is the length of the handle and the haft. Uh, looking at illustrations, you do see one-handed war hammers, so they were definitely a thing. But if you're looking at museum examples, it's often not clear what size or what length haft the original hammerhead was on. So uh, there are some theories that this one, this Venetian one for example, should be on a longer um, haft to turn it into more of a pole axe. Um, same with a hammer that's similar to this in the Wallace collection. There's theories that it was more of a pole axe than a war hammer. Um, so it's difficult to say when does a war hammer become a pole axe, you know, um, because again, illustrations show those going anywhere from sort of two handed hammer length all the way up to quite long pole axes. So, you know. How long is a piece of string, basically? Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd quickly look at them, go through them. Um, this thing's interesting, the uh, war club, because like I say, it's, it's my interpretation of it based on the illustrations. Um, I'll try and add a few of those so you can see what we're talking about. But it's interesting to use, uh, and that is pretty much it. Right. Cheers, folks.